There are several methods for wiring up lighting circuits, and for many years the wiring styles were not formalised, with the result that we may come across many different methods in our work. In this Learn Electrics video, we will look at a popular method many years ago, and one that is still in common use in many countries around the world. Often called the three-wire method, it is characterised by the neutral looping from ceiling rows to ceiling rows and the line conductor going direct to the light switches. Although it doesn't appear in the on-site guide and similar books now, it was, and still is, a very versatile wiring method. Every now and then, a post comes up on social media asking a question like, what is the wiring system where only the line conductor goes to the switch and the neutral goes directly to the ceiling rows? Or, my lighting circuits are quite old and are in sheathed singles and there's no neutral at the switch, as I would expect with a two-plate circuit, and it's definitely not three-plate. In this video, we will concentrate on the two-way lighting circuit using this method, and hopefully it helps you to understand another wiring system that does not appear in many books. Before we move on to the actual wiring, we cannot always say that a three-plate ceiling rose indicates a three-plate wiring method. Ceiling roses are changed as they become old or damaged, and if you think about it, they are just a connector block. As a reminder, with any wiring system, we should always connect a three-plate ceiling rows the same way. The central block of three terminals is always the live loop, the live feed coming into the room. The outer block of three is always the neutral block. One of the lamp wires goes into this. And the block of two terminal holes is the switch block for the switch wire, and the other lamp wire is also connected here. This is the terminal that turns the lamp on or off. Two-plate ceiling roses come in a variety of styles, and sometimes even junction boxes have been used for lighting terminations. Expect to see everything in older properties or DIY houses. With a two-plate ceiling rose, the central live loop block is absent. Some of the cabling in older properties may just be sheathed singles, sometimes unsheathed singles, which is a no-no nowadays, or a twin and earth in the old colours. Always take a few moments to understand in your own mind just what the wiring system in use actually is, and make notes as you go along, or photograph ceiling roses and switches. If you've written it down, you don't need to remember it. Just remember where you wrote it. Let's take a look at the three-wire, two-way lighting circuit. Once understood, it is actually very simple. Using a two-plate ceiling rose, we would begin by looping just the neutral into the neutral block at the ceiling rose. The incoming permanent line goes directly to the first light switch into terminal L1 as shown. This is two-way lighting, so we should connect three wires between the two switches. The order is shown here and I've used the old colours just for clarity. So red into the two commons, yellow into the two L1 terminals, and blue into the L2 terminals. It doesn't matter what colours, just keep the common to common, L1 to L1, and L2 to L2. Finally, from L2 of the second switch, take a switched line to the switch block of the ceiling rows. When the two lamp wires are connected, as shown, the circuit is complete. If the circuit is all old colours, then this is what you might expect. For clarity, we've left the earth conductors off the drawings, but we will need to connect them if they are there, and some older systems may not even have an earth supplied. Notice the red sleeving on the yellow and blue wires to show that, at some point, these could become energised wires at up to 240 volts. If we are using the new colour code for the wiring, then the circuit will look like this, and I've introduced three core plus earth strapper cable between the two switches. So how does this lighting circuit work? What happens when we operate the switches? We've called the switches X and Y, so you can follow along. With the switches in the positions shown by the red switch contacts, the lamp is off. Current cannot complete the circuit. If current cannot flow from the line through the circuit and back to the neutral, the lamp will be off. In a few moments, we'll look at the actual current flow through the circuit, but for now, 
pause the video and see if you can follow the path of the electric and determine why the lamp is not on. Now we've operated switch X and the lamp has come on. The circuit's been completed and current flows. Again, pause the video and check it out. This time, switch Y on the right has been switched and the circuit has been broken. The lamp goes out. And now switch X is operated again and the circuit is once more completed, so the lamp is on. Only when the circuit is complete, from the line terminal at the consumer unit and all the way back to the neutral, will the lamp come on. We can simplify the circuit drawings and we can show the current flow around the two-way circuit. Pause the video as required and follow the route of the current. The more that you learn now, the more you'll understand when on site. Keeping it very simple, especially for those that are new to electrics, we can start with a single one-way switch, a permanent line in and a switched line out. The switch contacts inside the switches operate as shown in the yellow box. The common or C terminal is always connected to either L1 or L2. In this example, current flows between L1 and common in one position and no current flows when the switch is in the L2 position as there is nothing connected to the L2 in one-way circuits. Look at this simplified view of a two-way circuit. It's a lot easier to understand if we turn the switches through 90 degrees as shown. I've also left the ceiling roses off the drawings to help understanding. And that is the basic circuit. Look at the wiring, the incoming permanent line to L1 of the first switch. L2 to L2 on both switches, common to common, and L1 to L1. Then the switched wire from L2 of the second switch up to the lamp, and finally neutral back to the consumer unit. Let's operate some switches and look at current flow. Start at switch X on the left, voltage appears at L1 and travels along the only wire available, the brown wire that goes to switch Y. But at switch Y it stops, the voltage or current cannot get any further, the switch contacts are open. Now operate switch Y, the right hand switch, and follow the current flow. Always start from where the voltage comes in, which is L1 of switch X. Voltage or current flows along the brown wire to L1 of switch Y, through the switch contacts and back to switch X along the black wire that connects both common terminals. At switch X it passes through the switch and onto the grey wire at L2 and then to L2 on switch Y. The brown switched line wire is connected to L2 so the current flows to the lamp. Through the lamp, because the neutral is connected, the lamp lights up. Now operate switch X. Voltage starts at L1 of switch X along the brown wire to L1 of switch Y through the switch to the common terminal and along the black wire back to switch X. But there it stops. It cannot make the connection to L2 and so the lamp goes out. Unless the voltage can make its way back to the neutral, then the lamp will not work. And finally, operate switch Y again. Start at the input, L1 of switch X. Voltage enters the circuit, goes through the switch onto the common or C terminal, and then along the black wire to the common at switch Y. It can now pass through the switch contact to L2 and along the switch wire to light up the lamp. For a moment, let's compare the three-wire, two-way circuit that we've just looked at with the three-plate method we are all taught now. In this drawing, the terminal blocks are shown for a two-plate ceiling rose. Current enters the circuit as the permanent line at L1 of the first switch and leaves as the switched line at L2 of the second switch. With the three-plate method, the permanent line first goes to the ceiling rows and then to L1 of the first switch. Now the big difference. The switched line leaves by L2 of the first switch, not the second. And here I've shown them side by side for comparison. With the three-wire method, the permanent line goes to the switch and the switched line to the ceiling rows. Input switch one, output switch two. In the three-plate method, there is a permanent line to the ceiling rows 
and then the line goes to the switch. The switch line then returns to the ceiling rows from the same switch. Input and output are both switch 1. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. In a later video, we will move on and show you how to wire up a two-way lighting circuit using just two wires and how to convert this to intermediate or three-way lighting. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.